Hey guys, welcome back, it's Maverick here, and today we are going to go through the final two episodes of Magia Record, the final season, and the end to all of this madness. Uh, I'm not quite sure if this is, is this actually marks the entire ending of the Magia Record side story, uh, considering it is a game, I'm assuming that the story is uh, continuously ongoing, so this might just be like one big arc within the story, right? But in any case, uh, you guys know what I mean here. So, we still got Toka and Nemu on the loose, uh, there's still trying to complete their dill pill system which uh no i i still don't think it we should just you know completely erase away and and deny without really giving it some further thought but you know we know anime logic here right and the fact that they those two are so adamant on trying to complete it and the fact that they are hey actually not the uh protagonist means there's probably some fatal flaw within the system that uh is yet to be um, we have yet to see and will be probably the focal point of conflict in these next two episodes. In the meantime, well, let's just get into it and see what's up. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. And I guess we also uh, need to see what happened to uh, you and Momoko. My money is still on those two have made the ultimate sacrifice. Why would you be wasting your souls? I mean, isn't the whole idea that their souls will be saved? But indeed, the 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 thing that he mentioned about harming human society. Now, I'm not quite sh sure uh, entirely how it's supposed to operate at this point, but I think they still, you know, in order to power the entire dopamine system, they still need to harvest some external source of energy, not just the negative emotions, right? So that's why they were abducting some normal people to uh, to power them. I guess they need to also harvest some emotional energy from them as well. You know, the most idealistic version of this would be that it can be powered entirely by negative emotions itself, right? Like think about it like that. You know, you use negative emotions to to power the dopamine system, and the dopamine system, uh, the dopamine system in place gives a sort of outlet for the, uh, you know, for the negative emotions. And, you know, it's like a huge feedback loop, right? Where all of the energy is contained within. Like the negative emotions released during duplication is in turn, you know, uh, circled back to power the entire system. That would be the idealistic version of, of things. But obviously, there's no such thing as a perpetual machine, right? I guess even in this magical world, there's no such thing as a perpetual machine. So they would still ultimately need some outside energy as well. But hopefully that would cut down until acceptable levels of um, sacrifice? I mean, think about it, right? If they do nothing, you know, people will still die. Witches will still appear and they will uh, kill people, right? They still will kill innocent people. Anyway, it's all a hypothetical discussion anyways. Okay, so like one big nuclear bomb, something like that. Okay. 
So is that a one-time thing, or to continuously power it, they will still need a... So who are the rest of them? Alright, so, so here's the other catch, right? So if the magical sis girl system is stopped and intercepted by the Snowpill system, then the Cubase can't harvest the energies to extend the lifespan of the universe, right? I mean, I'm assuming that's the other catch. Now again, I don't I don't actually disagree with Cube here. It's just the the way that he goes about this that's really really shady and uh, infuriating, right? Like if he laid out everything completely truthfully at the very beginning to anybody who was uh, seeking for him, then I think most people probably would have no problem with this at all. I'm sure there are still people who are willing to to bet on this, right? There's more than enough people who are willing to bet their future lives, right, their souls, on creating one powerful wish. Oh. Oh, is this also some kind of, like, dreamscape or something? Yeah, I think the ending to this is definitely not going to... It's definitely not going to be like a huge happy ending where Yui comes back, right? I think ultimately... Well... Hmm... I guess that depends, because Yui's well-being is... Yeah, it is Iroha's wish, right? Most probably not. But then again, Yui can't, you know, occupy Kyubei's body forever, right?
Yeah, so this is like the uh... I feel like this is also a key moment. Where are you heading to, though? So her thing is getting heartbroken? No, she's already a magical girl. I actually thought that was a cubit in her arm, but no, it's just a cat. So she just entered because she was chasing after a cat? Yep. <laughs> She does have one. You know, one thing I've always wondered, you know, they have, they each have their own areas and whatnot, right? So what happens if there are no wishes spawning in their areas? So they'll just not be able to, to purify their soul gems? Why are you still in your costume, though?
There's actually quite the interesting little side story here. Yeah, so she did have an extra one, eh? Yeah, I think they mentioned before like Cleopatra, Joan of Arc, and so on and so forth are magical girls, right? Well, if you could be earnest about it from the very beginning, I think none of this would have happened, Cube. Yeah, the key key thing here being tricked, right? Again, I feel like even without tricking people, there'd be plenty of, of girls who would be willing to go through this. You know, even if you lay out all the terms and conditions. Heck, I bet there would be plenty of guys who would be willing to, be, to become magical girls, even if you told them everything about this. <laughs> Uh, I do find that kind of funny, but it's true, you know, it is absolutely true. Make a choice. Why did you become a magical girl?
So that means she's gonna witchify? Yep. There. Yeesh. Yeah, there's no turning back from here. So now... We let the witch rest in peace, eh? Oh, okay. So this is an actual different ending here. So yeah, the ending of the previous two episodes, those actually carried on from season two. Uh, this is kind of new. Is this going to just be like um, some credit rolling goal? Because if it is, then I don't want to go through that. Uh, I will skip ahead to see if there's anything here. And if not, I will see you guys in just a second. Alright, so as mentioned before, I am continuing on with episode 4 here, combining episode 3 and 4 into one episode. Uh, last episode, we actually got to see a little bit more from Kuroi's point of view. Um, I keep on mentioning that I feel like it was going to be a pivotal moment in one way or the other. Uh, I certainly wasn't expecting her to just completely witchify at the very end. I actually thought she was going to be a pivotal moment in maybe inspiring something in Uroha or, or doing something to, to ultimately... Um, to ultimately cause the entire Dopal system to fall. And heck, that could still be true, right? Because after all, she did break through Alina's barrier and she did inspire something, uh, though I'm not quite sure exactly what, within uh, Iroha, right? So, uh, well, we'll leave that for, for another time. Although I am actually quite curious, like, does the uh, does the game or is the anime going to go further into like why she made her wish and, you know, all the, all the various darkness that, 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 got to her that that caused her to have this kind of change i actually really like the uh the the story of the anonymous magical girl there because it's you know compared to to actually giving it a name and then a personality and someone to interact with being on this verge of hey it's kind of like a nobody it's just a you know it's just you know someone on the street someone that someone that you pass by you know just a bystander in in a, in, in a sense and yet you know just the, the interaction, that specific interaction, having that kind of everlasting impact and whatnot. I do like those kinds of stories, right? Um, it, it gives it a, a kind of, I don't know, a realistic view? Because just, just enough of this sort of a dissonance here, you know, where we don't have to imagine the entire girl's personality, backstory, and so on and so forth. But just from that specific interaction um, and, and bring out these concepts of morality, of what is justice, what is good, what is right, uh, you know, uh, altruism versus uh, selfishness, and so on and so forth. I, I do like that story a lot. Um, but... You know, is it going to mean anything at the very end here, right? Uh, what does Kuroi's transformation actually spell for the end of this series? We only got one episode left, so that remains to be seen. Uh, another thing here is, uh, again, in the entire uh, entirety of the Dopel system versus the, um, let's say, the Magical Girl system, right? So the Dopel system, I keep on saying that there's... I, I still feel like there are some mirrors to, to looking at you know, how how this thing can um, can help the magical girls and, and whatnot. Uh, is there a way to to limit the sacrifices, limit the, the loss of innocent life, and so on and so forth? Could, could there any 
time be a sort of um, equilibrium shift where, hey, people would consider maybe using this system outweighs the cons that it, it has right now. Like, obviously, right now, it's it's at a staggering loss of life, right, due to end the Magical Girl system, but, um, you know, I, I do feel like if we, if we rein it back a little bit and for it to be, like, a more reasonable comparison, then maybe we can, we can talk a little bit more about them. But hey, see, in terms of the Magical Girl system, which which Cube has in place right now, which is the basis of the entire series, you know, I, I kept on saying, even, uh, I mean, I, I obviously I, at at the time Mad Madoka Magic came out, I wasn't doing these videos and whatnot. But if I, if I were, I definitely would say something along the lines of, um, hey, uh, how, you know, all things considered, it's not that bad of a deal, right? It's not that bad of a deal. Uh, if you if Cube was willing to to completely lay out the terms, you know, explain everything in full, not just like um, you know he doesn't lie, but he he withholds information, right? So if he just laid out completely, yes, you are going to be uh you know you are going to be a magical girl. You can get one very very powerful wish, but then later on you will have to fight witches for the rest of your lives, or until you also fall into despair and turn into a witch yourself. That is your thing. If you laid that out completely. I'm certain there will still be many, many people taking those terms, and in fact, even even guys would be willing to turn into girls to to take that uh, to take that contract too. So you know, at the end of the day, the the instability of this entire system, you people, well, that goes all the way back to Cube. If you were honest, none of this would have happened. But again, we wouldn't have a Kickass series, right? Okay, that's kind of a, a beside the point. So let's just get right into uh, the final episode here. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Mm -hmm. So, she defeated the witch, right? Yeah, she doesn't need to hear that right now, Kyube. Art wreck. Last touch. No. All right. I guess translating that as record does make some sense. Practice what you preach!
Is that a form of... No, no, never mind. What? Oh, that's Eero has bow. I mean arrow. Is it? All the magical girls are banding together to fight against that. All the magical girls around. <laughs> Now, speaking of which, Toka and Nemu's 
illness or whatnot, whatever reason they were in the hospital, it wasn't exactly removed when they became magical girls, right? I mean, at least Toka, I, I seem to... I'm sorry, Nemu, I seem to remember, was in a pretty frail condition even at this moment. So... Oh, okay. By the way, what Purgus is still going on? Oh no, wait, it's actually Alina? Yep. Yeah, the revolution now! Glad you spent <laughs> Oh man, her English. Her English. So she just wants to destroy the world? <laughs> oh, she is such a hurt. So she turned out to be the great antagonist in the end. So now we're just having a repeat of the second episode. <laughs> what the? What? I'm sorry. I just find that. Uh, all right, all right. Let's not make any judgment for now. Let's wait. Let's wait to see what's actually gonna happen. Oh, it's you. Huh? 
So yeah, there, Mokum, if you are definitely dead. So we're going through this kind of concept of healing worship. It makes sense. It makes sense. But uh, what exactly is going to happen at the very end here? So, so basically, so basically, Alina's witch, Toka, Nemu. And Lord Pugus all Okay, that's actually, is this, is this the first time we've ever had someone say that? I can't quite remember if Madoka actually said it before. Glad that they became a magical girl.
Well, I guess they're gonna end this with the power of hopes and dreams, right? And also the entirety of our food as well, right? So wait a second, if in this timeline they were able to de destroy Water Pugis just like this, then wouldn't Madoka have no need to... Well, I, I guess that doesn't really make sense because we already see Madoka here as a magical girl, so... Okay, never mind. Never mind. So, we're just in the epilogue. Really? That's it? <laughs> okay, we still st we still have like five more minutes here. So obviously we need to see what's gonna happen later on. Oh, what is this song? Is this by Tricell or is this by the uh, our main cast of girls? I think it's the latter actually. Oh, actually, no, no. I... Uh, or is this actually Claris? Uh, not 100% sure. Sounds like Clarus, though. Hmm. Shouldn't they and and shouldn't they actually have a uh, the name of this song out coming, like maybe right now? Or did I miss it? Oh, oh! <laughs> it's literally Clarus and Triso. No wonder. I was like. I, I kind of hear Tricell here, but then it also sounds like... Cl oh, okay, I see. I see. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> oh, that was stupid. I mean, yeah, I, I, I get that there's still something playing in the left there, but... I think that's just replaying the events of Season 2 and Season 3.
And, I mean, there's absolutely an epilogue after this, so I'm still waiting to see that. Alright. Oh, back at the villa. Oh. She cut her hair. Alright, so somebody needs to leave the record of your struggles, of your fights, right? And hence, Magia record. Oh, at least the memories and photos are back. And there we have the title drop. The end. All right, see you guys after this. Well, 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 with that title drop, we finally conclude this entire series here. Uh, again, there might be some more continuing on within the game or whatnot. I'm not 100% sure of that, but at least to, to us, at least, uh, we are now with a fully contained story right here. And I gotta say, I, I do like this concept and this title drop here of, you know, the, the, the idea that, you know, these are the records of, of these uh, unknowns throughout history, right? All these magical girls that have existed up to this point they have a name they have a face they've done things they lived you know uh they they've kept hope they've kept on on fighting and fighting and funding until ultimately they fail and become and die and become witches but you know their heroics and their stories needs to be uh, recorded and um, passed down right somebody needs to remember them i do like this concept and actually this it's not a new concept it's actually been used uh, quite quite a few times within literature and heck i'm i'm pretty sure that it, it was used in in some movies and um and and some high profile works as well i can't quite remember off the top of my head but but i do remember similar concepts to this right uh the the idea that you know these are the lives of the of the nobodies right this is not like a, an entirely epic story where we have the 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 top top you know the the a-list uh protagonists and whatnot these are sort of the side characters the supporting characters in the story where it's not a uh, critical to to the entire um to 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 you know world peace or or you know world destruction or you know that that kind of matter i, I mean i guess you could argue that point considering that they were able to defeat war Perseus, uh here something that i might add a lot of the um the, the main cast was really not able to do and more on that later but um you know you guys know what i mean it's not specific to to iroha and yachio and and this particular instance right but instead pertaining to all the other magical girls ones who you know we've seen their we've seen their faces appear in this series and maybe in in the main series and heck we we might not even see their faces of all at all just mentioned in passing and whatnot but 
you know, this is a story dedicated to Dim, right? And if you if you view at it as uh, in such a way as a sort of like a side story, you know, this is uh, you know not meant to be as epic. It, it's just meant to to allow you to to get into the daily lives of, of one such magical girl or or the the struggles and and you know the trials that they go through that she goes through. And it, the the concept of this makes a lot more sense, right? Almost so much that I'm wondering if it might have been better to bring this out and and say it at the very forefront of. This series instead right this is the story you know if, you know if, imagine this right at the very beginning we, we have this intro here and you know, sort of like a i don't know like a star wars scrolling or, or whatnot or maybe um with with iroha or, or kubei narrating the, the situation with magic girls because we all the reason that we're, we're watching this we already know uh of the main series right the the concept of magical girls and and the entire magical girl system in kubei uh we're not we're, we're all familiar with that already so coming out directly and saying no this is not not, this does not have anything to do with with the main stuff, but this is just simply allowing us to know about the lives of these other girls. I I, kind of, I almost feel like that might have been even better, right? Now, obviously, doing it this way, they they have this opportunity to give a title drop, but I feel like even starting out with this, uh, they could still have this title drop moment at the very end, and and I think it would just I don't know, it it, it will align realign everybody's expectations and come into this with with a. Uh, 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 a more open sense of mind, right? And heck, even even myself, I'm I'm guilty of that as well because you know I, I really liked the the original Medical Magica series, and I was expecting something similar to that here, uh, of which it obviously is not, right? So um, I, I do feel kind of feel that maybe they should have mentioned that uh, at the beginning, and and if so, I think that would that have been much better like for me personally, I I really like this concept because um, even though you know I'm not a I, I'm not a historian by trade or, or in practice, but but that was what I majored in. And this concept of you know recording the lives uh, of the daily people, um, you know, just just having this sort of record here, uh, especially for for those who have you know who have made their contributions to history, their contributions to to humanity, and yet uh, just because they're not at they're not the top top people, we're not. You know, we their 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 stories are lost to history, right? You know, it, it's always a sad thing here. So so being able to to leave some kind of record here, I I feel like this is an interesting concept that that could even be expanded on, right? Like maybe from Iroha from this point forward makes it her 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 goal, her ultimate goal. Like it wasn't her original wish, but but now that she she's gone through this, right? It, it becomes her goal to to sort of meet as many magic girls as as possible and you know understand them, know what they did. Know Know their struggles, know their fears and despairs, and and record it down. I feel like that would be quite the nice sort of concept as well. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of you know lots of lots of countries have like this this concept of tomb of the unknown soldiers or like say for instance CIA they have a memorial as well in in their headquarters. Uh, they're, they're I think they're like nameless. They're only like stars on the wall, like nameless stars because obviously they're they're agents. They can't reveal their names of them, but but it's all recorded down. But they honor them with like an anonymous star. Uh, I believe it's a star or, or something like on a wall or or, or whatnot. So yeah. Anyways, I, I do like this concept here. Um, talking about the the ending to to this, right? Um, you know, with with the big reveal that uh, I guess big reveal. You know, Yachio is actually carrying on the hopes and dreams of all the other girls, and and uh, um, and Iroha is in a sense. I guess that's why they 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 sort of connected to each other, <laughs> connect uh, no pun intended uh, uh, over this because Iroha is is now saying uh, all this stuff about you know she wants to to un fully understand them and and record them and whereas Yachio in a sense is the 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 recorder if you will because she is the bearer of of the others uh, the other magical girls hopes and dreams right um, you know in the end this turns out to be a very sort of classic magical girl kind of story in a way because you know typically in magical girl stories right the traditional kind we're supposed to overcome over overcome evil and and um overcome despair through through hopes and dreams through the power of teamwork and friendship and all that which is much more in line with with you know traditional magical kind of stuff rather than the, the sort of deconstruction that the main series has gone for you know we we don't really go through this and like like sure they, they work together there's friendship and and all that but but if you think about it it doesn't really touch upon these subjects like like think about homura right she's only obsessed with with madoka if you will and madoka in a sense even though she she is a little bit more uh i guess a, a little bit more 
uh, wider in, in, in her sense of love and whatnot. And to her, you know, the single most important person is still Homura as well. So so we, we have that like that kind of situation going on here. Whereas in here in Magia Record, we, we have a more balanced approach or traditional approach to things, if you will. So I guess that's that's quite interesting there as well. Um, also, another thing that I'm not quite sure if this is significant or not is that is uh, Iroha mentioning that she has no regret in terms of becoming a magical girl. Now, I do think this is the first time we've actually heard a magical girl say this, right? Throughout this entire series, all in the main series as well, we've always ha heard them, you know, uh, falling into despair or, or you know, it, they almost always, like nearly all the main characters have, have a sense of, you know, why me? Why, why must I go through this? Why must I live? And, and, so, and you know, the negativity overcomes them and overwhelms them to the point where, where uh, you know, they, they, they rage against, you know, their, their fate of being a magical girl and, and so on and so forth, right? Um, and, and so having, I don't know, I, I do feel like this is the first time anyone has said something similar to this that they don't, that they don't regret it. Like, even Madoka... I think, I can't recall correctly, but I believe she says something to Homura about, I'm glad I became a magical girl, but but the reason that she said that is because uh, I'm glad I became a magical girl because so I can meet you, right? So so it's a little bit different here in terms of that versus, you know, I don't regret becoming a magical girl, right? And, and this is more like a, a general, a generic kind of... of uh, of, of statement and declaration. So there is a little bit of difference here. But but you have to wonder, though. Um, I'm sure that throughout history, she's not the first magical girl to have this kind of concept either, right? You know, we look at what Kyubei has said, you know, all the past magical girls, those that, that went on to do great things and, and their names are remembered in history and whatnot. Like like I said before, like I believe Cleopatra and Joan of Arc are both... Um, According to Cuba, they were both magical girls, right? And and probably many others as well, uh, like like some other past queens and 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 whatnot, right? So may, I'm sure that they truly believed in what they believed in question mark. So um, I'm I'm sure that they did not regret. That's presumably, presumably. But uh, still, it, it's kind of refreshing to see someone actually come out and say it and um and express this, which kind of ties in into what I've been saying throughout the entire series, right? I feel like the magical girl concept that that Cube has the system in place isn't inherently bad in fact I would even argue in favor of keeping the system in place um, it's just that you know again the, the main problem that I have is is Cube's uh, shady practices right and and you know making people not read the fine print if you will so if if, if you know all of that was up front you know, I I think it would totally be fine for it for this to uh, for this system to exist, and like I said, there will probably be many people who are still um, cl clamoring to become magic girls, you know, boys or girls, right? Um, heck, even 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 the guys would probably be willing to to uh, uh, to to you know change their gender and and become magical girls as well. Uh, some people, anyways. Um, so yeah, and and we know I, I do believe that that is possible, right? Because Alina here was talking about uh, changing the entirety of humanity into magical girls. So so that is obviously uh, possible here. So so you know we that is not like just some some sort of you know some sort of out of uh, some sort of crazy kind of theory or, or crazy kind of concept. Um, and speaking of which, Alina being the 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 big antagonist at the very end. I don't know. I feel like that the at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who was the antagonist and one. It doesn't really matter all that much. Those who were sacrificed were sacrificed. Uh, then again, you know, for for Toka and 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 uh, Nemu, I feel like their their remaining time to live probably wasn't all that great, anyways. Um, and and same, I think Alina was also uh, someone from the hospital, right? She, that's where that's where she she first appeared. So I I feel like. To them, you know, this this is sort of like their 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 last, you know, their their dying rage against the world before before their time came to an end here. So I guess to them, it's 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 kind of more, it's kind of better at least, and and that kind of also shaped the concept of Iroha wanting to record them, you know, to to this is their their evidence that they lived on this on this earth before, you know, that kind of concept here. So it all turns into a beautiful story and um quite the, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say happy ending, but this is definitely not a sad ending, right? It's a, it's a, it's a satisfort. It has sat. It's a satisfactory sort of ending here, if you will. Um, 
and uh, what else? And and hey, Yui, even though she didn't turn back, at least everybody got their got her memories back that they acknowledged that she existed before. And and that that kind of ties in into like again the the entire concept of recording and and um, knowing that these that these girls have lived before and and what they did and and their accomplishments and and so on and so forth. So yeah. Um, anyways, I guess that's all I want to say for for that. You know, the series as a whole, you know. If we if we go back and and look at it through the lens of this simply being a story where we 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 kind of go through these side character in a sense side characters uh to the main series anyways uh and and you know know what they're doing know that they went through something like this I I guess I don't know I I mean as just as a general anime I I still have some problems with with the pacing in in some of the areas particularly in season one and whatnot. But, um, I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know, it's still hard for me to, 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 to fully say whether I like this series or not. You know, there are interesting concepts, there are, there are parts where I think it's boring, there are parts where I feel it's too convoluted, there are parts where I feel like they don't explain enough, uh, and, 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 and kind of like just throw it in, like, willy-nilly at the last moment or something of that sort. Like, like, for instance, the ending here with Alina and then Nemu and Toka doing the exact same thing twice, uh, if you will, um, and, and trying to fix things. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of, okay, okay, like, like, whatever, um... Eh, in any case, I don't I don't want to talk too much about that. Uh, one last final thing that I do want to mention, though, is in regards to actually them defeating Warburgus, right? Uh, because that was the huge barrier that that you know Homura and, and Madoka were not able to go f to go through uh, in in all those timelines. In fact, that is what Homura was trying to to sort of of avert, right? The fact that all of them would eventually die when they meet Warburgus. Well, in this timeline, if Orokugus is actually being has been defeated by Iroha, does that mean that in this timeline, actually the Madoka and Homura and all the others, they continue living on in this timeline in a, you know, in in a much more happy sort of sense? Like at least they survive through Orokugus and are able to continue living on? Question mark. I mean, I think this is the first time we've actually seen any sort of timeline where, where this can happen, right? Now, now, granted, that doesn't mean that some of the other girls, like for instance, Mami, they don't go crazy or become witchified, you know, prior to this, because in a lot of the other timelines, that's what happened as well. But it's just that, you know, at the end of the day, it was always not being able to go f to 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 cross the Great Wall that is uh, that is Water Hugas attack, um, and um, you know, either. Madoka having to die or having to use her wish to 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 defeat it right that that was always the uh, the sort of critical point here so I do have to wonder what this means for the main series as well right like the fact that Iroha and Yachika were able to to get through Water um does that have any bearing whatsoever in terms of how the main series could play out like is does this count as one sort of possibility right you know people uh I think in the last episode another commenter mentioned that this is just one of the many timelines that madoka actually now that she's become goddess madoka you know she she's able to see every single timeline and this is one of the timelines that she found well when this timeline co sort of constitute as a sort of a, a way out of of the loop although i guess you know because as long as magical girls still exist as long as witchification still exists madoka still has to do something about it right so i guess you can't really say that everything is solved but i don't know i, I just find this interesting because i, I do feel like this changes canon a little bit in the sense that you know this we are in uncharted unprecedented territory here but whether or not anything substantial comes out of it well i guess we'll just have to go back to the main series and see whenever that releases so anyways thank you guys for joining me on this final season of market record uh hopefully you guys have stayed through you know season one season two and this season as well and um you know if there are other magia uh, well maybe not magia record but um there's probably we already know that there's going to be medical magical sequels right you know if there are those sequels in the future i will be watching them as well if you ever check out my channel for other stuff if, you, if this is your first time here and um yeah or not you know the choice is up to you and if not well hopefully i will be able to see you guys again someday sometime uh as fate defines it so anyways until we cross paths again this has been mavry and bye bye <laughs>